Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Tuesday, October 2nd, 2012, and I'm Darko. Thank you for joining me today. And in this video, or this set of videos, I'm going to cover Big Brother and some other interesting news about the, not really takeover of America, but subversion or fall of um, what was known as America. Russian general, the USSR collapsed and the same fate has been prepared for the USA. This is from shithitthefanplan.com. It's a good website from October 2nd. In the following video commentary, Russian general asked some interesting questions and includes his own thoughts, perhaps on a non-official Russian position, about the variety of topics that include the end of the U.S. dollar hegemony, the orchestration of the 9-11 attacks to engage America in a Mideast war, the puppeteers behind the politicians and the coming premeditated collapse of the U.S. as we know it. While here in the United States, we remain enclosed in a propaganda bubble controlled by Western multi-billion dollar media conglomerates, business interests, and political alliances, there can be no doubt that the other schools of thought exist throughout the world. What may seem like reality to our populace is perhaps nothing more than an illusion, which I think we can all agree on. It says the United States does not exist in a vacuum, and as such, we simply cannot ignore the assessments, outlooks, and opinions of foreign leadership as they pertain to the global implications of current events. How did they ruin the USSR, says this. And this is the video that we're talking about, so you get a little picture of him. And the links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so please go check those out. So he says, how did they ruin the USSR? They called the Soviet Union a prison for people and an evil empire. It says the same thing is being done to the US. We also intervened in Afghanistan. Do you remember how that ended, he says. It's the same thing with the United States and the Amer Americans. Uh, can't do anything there. Now the entire Muslim world hates the U.S., and when the global mafia dumps the dollar, the entire world will think that Americans deserve this, but this won't benefit the people in our country, especially those who've been saving up dollars. There's another thing that we should take into account, the general says. In the U.S. lives 5% of the world's population, but Americans consume 50% of the world's energy resources. The global mafia sees this as a problem. Some of our people who fled to the U.S. and now live there on welfare live better there unemployed than they would have lived in Russia even if they were employed. The slave masters think that this situation in the U.S. is unacceptable because even the slaves live relatively well there. So the United States is doomed in this sense. And lastly, even if you're the head of a mighty state and you don't understand global politics and don't understand the methods of the global politics, you're still a hostage of the global mafia. It keeps using that term, global mafia. The leadership of the USSR and the leadership of the USA carried out an internal and external politics, i.e. your puppets, but the global mafia carries out global politics. It says the USSR collapse and the same fate has been prepared for the USA. Then there's this article from 2009 that uh, went through an uh, email list that I received, American Capitalism Gone with a Whimper from Pravda, this is a Russian website. It must be said that like the breaking of a great dam, the American descent into Marxism is happening with a uh, breathtaking speed against the backdrop of a passive, hapless sheeple. Excuse me, dear reader, I meant people. True, the situation has been well prepared on and off for the past century, especially the past 20 years. The initial testing grounds was upon our holy Russia, and bloody test it was. But we Russians would not just roll over and give up our freedoms and our souls, no matter how much money Wall Street poured into the fist of the Marxists. Those lessons were taken and used to properly prepare the American populace for the surrender of their freedom souls to the whims of the elites and their betters. First, the population was dumbed down through a politicized and substandard education system based on pop culture rather than classics. Americans know more about their favorite TV dramas than the drama in D.C. that directly affects their lives. They care more for their right to choke down a McDonald's soy burger. I ordered the include the soy burger, and Burger Kings uh, then for their own constitutional rights. Then they turn around and lecture us about our rights and about our democracy. Then their faith in God was destroyed until their churches, all tens of thousands of different branches and denominations, were for the most part little more than Sunday circuses, and their televangelists and top Protestant mega-preachers were more than happy to sell out their souls and flocks to on the winning side of the pseudo-Marxist politicians, or another, including, of course, the Zionists, right? Um, their flocks may complain, but when explained that they would be on the winning side, their flocks would ever so quickly reject Christ in hopes for earthly power. Even our holy Orthodox churches are scandalously liberalized in America. 
The final collapse has come with the election of Obama. His speed in the past three months has been truly impressive. His spending and uh, money printing has been a record setting, not just in America's short history in the world. And if this keeps up more than another, there's no sign that it will not. America, at best, will resemble the Weimar Republic and, at worst, Zimbabwe. The past two weeks have been the most breathtaking of all. He goes on and talks about a planned redesign of the American Byzantine tax system by the very thieves who use it to bankroll their thefts, losses, and swindles of hundreds of billions of dollars, saying that they make uh, the Russian oligarchs look more than uh, ordinary street thugs. In comparison, these men, of course, are not elected panel, but made up of appointees picked from the very financial oligarchs and their henchmen who are now gorging themselves on trillions of American dollars in one bailout after another. They're also usurping the rights, duties, and powers of American Congress or Parliament. Again, Congress has put up little more than a whimper to their masters. Then came Barack Obama, who now has the power, the self-given power to fire CEOs and assume other employees of private companies at will. Prime Minister Putin, less than two months ago, mind you, this was in 2009, warned Obama and UK's Blair not to follow the path to Marxism. It only leads to disaster. Apparently, even though we suffered 70 years of the Western-sponsored horror show, we know we know nothing as foolish, drunken Russians. So let our wise Anglo-Saxon fools find out the folly of their own pride. Again, the American public has taken this with barely a whimper, but a free man whimper. So should it be any surprise to discover that the democratically controlled Congress of America is working on passing new regulation that would give the American Treasury Department the power to set fair maximum salaries, evaluate performance, control how private companies give out pay raises and bonuses. It says here, Senator Barney Franks, a social pervert basking in his homosexuality, of course, amongst the modern Latin American social or societal norm, as well as that of the general West, Homosexuality is not only not a look down upon life choice, but is often praised as a virtue. And as Marxist enlightenment has led this effort. And finishing up with this article, the Russian owners of American companies and industries should look thoughtfully at the option of closing their facilities down and fleeing the land of the red as fast as possible. In other words, divest while there is still value left. The proud American will go down into his slavery without a fight, beating his chest and proclaiming to the world how free he really is. The world will only snicker. And private investigator uh, Ross Perot warns America could be taken over. It's kind of a prophetic little announcement there. But, uh, you know, he's probably put there to give people maybe a choice of a third party. Never, kind of like Ron Paul, never really supposed to go there because the global mafia doesn't allow it. But uh, he was talking about, what, the sucking sound of jobs going overseas, which is what we've seen. He says, the last thing I ever want to see is our country taken over because we're so financially weak, we can't do anything. He said, nobody that's running, as far as the elections, really talks about it, the money spending, and about what we have to do and why we have to do it. They would prefer not to have it discussed. Then next up, Europeans must fight against global banking cartels. So global banking mafia, same thing, right? Chris Dorsey, an economist and banking analyst, said in Monday in an interview with Press TV that competitiveness is they control the system and the people in these nations. That's why I said human assets, right? Human resources. They fight over the scraps. It's ridiculous. I would over here, he says, what's going on and what's driving all of this is not sovereign nations like Germany and Italy. It's institutions that control those governments. We're talking about think tanks and uh, Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the RAND Corporation, all of these types of institutions. It's not the people inside those governments and the institutions that control the eurozone countries it's the european central bank which takes orders from the bank for international settlements right in this country in the u.s it's the federal reserve bank these are private central banks they have the same ownership they make coordinated moves then bear stern's email refers to bonds as sack of shit or a bag of shit we're going to leave you to hold a bag of shit right that's the old saying. But the bank kept foisting them on investors as a lawsuit. So a new lawsuit accuses Bear Stearns, now owned by J.P. Morgan, of knowingly pushing rotten mortgages securities onto investors before the financial meltdown. And U.K. health chief earns $366,000 on top of salary amid recession. So it goes on. It says he's pocketed $366,000 on top of his government's salary, uh, total earnings to almost half a million dollars which is 12 times more than the average nurse in the UK. And it's funny because, you know, while he's making all that money, right, 
uh, hospitals are letting patients die to save money so that he can get more. Hospitals are depriving elderly patients of food and drink to hasten their deaths as part of a cost-cutting measure to free up bed space, leading doctors warn. Remember this article, uh, this story about uh, not hiring smokers in Florida. We won't hire smokers, declared. So the beach policy, the Delray Beach uh, town or city in Florida, is policy in place to save money. The messed up thing, too, is, is why don't they equate pharmaceutical stuff in there, right? Why don't they do that? Why, are you taking, uh, you know, Xanax? Are you taking uh, something else? Why, you know, why don't you have to declare pharmaceutical drugs? Why, aren't, why don't you have to declare that you have fluoride in your water? And You know what I mean? That should be uh, equated, too. See, it's discrimination, just like discrimination against people who go through toll booths, toll booths whatever, right? They're already discriminated because they have to, uh, if they decide to pay with cash and not go through the little easy pass and stuff like that, then they have to pay more than the other person. And now they're actually, if they're paying high denominations of bills, they'll actually um, detain them. And this is like when we look back, it'll be, well, these are, the, these are changes, right? These are things that are changes, what, gra grassroots and that. But uh, it's not. It's what I've mentioned before. It's engineer consent and manufacturer consent. You know, manufacturer consent, they use the government against you with all these laws to force you to do something and then say it was democratic, even though you didn't have a flip and say about it. And engineer consent is all those brainwashed sheeple who listen to, to television and stuff like that and get brainwashed, and then they actually convince themselves that what they're being told is the best thing from that for them when it's really going to screw them and their and their fellow humans out and their future out. So they they basically volunteer uh, to do this to allow it to happen. That's engineer consent. Uh, renters have privacy and property rights too, says Cato Legal Associate Sophie, co-author this blog and saying that a person's home is a castle and thus affords certain uh, protections and immunities, including the right to exclude unwanted visitors uh, that apply whether you own or rent. So, yeah, I, this is true. Ordinance authorizing general um, administrative searches of rental properties have been increasing and adopted by local authorities with little protection for privacy interests. These searches take place even if both the landlord and tenant believe it's not necessary and the owner of the property even has to pay a fee for the unwanted search to receive a rental license. Here's a perfect example of engineer consent to manufacturer consent. The city sometimes makes initial requests for consent, but these are mere courtesy because the city proceeds with an administrative warrant, i.e. force, threat of force and the gun in your face in the event of a refusal without a showing of probable cause to believe there's a housing code violation or other problems. So then it becomes what? Voluntary to involuntary. So this is taking place in Red Wing, Minnesota, and a group of landlords and tenants have challenged the inspection program and on the basis of it being what? The ordinance is unconstitutional. And the Minnesota Supreme Court will decide whether to take the case uh, this fall. Next up, Walmart workers ask for basic rights. Remember, I was just covering this, and Walmart calls riot police. Remember, they just had a, a quote, flash mob. It wasn't a flash mob. It was a group of school children. They were seeing God Bless America on 9-11, and uh, they actually got told to leave. And Walmart called the police to have them basically uh, uh, escorted out of there. They said it was a big misunderstanding. I apologize. But uh, you know how it is. Uh, th these bastards, they push whatever they're going to do until someone complains. I'll leave you with this video, and then we'll return with Big Brother. Thank you. Unpaid wages, non-payment of overtime, and non-payment of minimum wage. There are unsafe conditions that workers have brought to management's attention, and there's discrimination going on. Walmart needs to clean up their warehouses, respect workers' rights under the law, and take responsibility for what's happening in their own Five minutes to disperse. 